Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again for another Thought for the Day. This is Saturday the 25th of July. I trust you're all keeping well, trust you're all keeping safe. And uh, wherever you're um, tuning in to, to worship tomorrow, uh, I trust you're preparing and looking forward uh, to joining with others and uh, celebrating the Lord's Day uh, together. Now, I want to talk... Well, introduce this little thought um, by talking about these. These are um, daily Bible reading notes and um, and they're great. They're a wonderful tool. Uh, this is one that Patricia's using at the moment. Um, I use them myself. I know many others do and uh, they're wonderful. Um, they've been used by many people uh, over the years uh, just to deepen their relationship with the Lord. And that's well and good, but um, just a, a wee word of caution, wee word of warning, uh, friends, because uh, although these are good and we all use them, uh, th this is the equivalent of just uh, snacking on God's word, okay? Uh, they'll satisfy you for a wee while, but um, you're not going to grow too much if you rely on these uh, totally. You've got to supplement your diet, uh, as it were. And of course, you do that by uh, uh, reading a little bit more substantially. Uh, these normally just give you a few verses to read, but you need to read your Bible a wee bit more than that. You don't need me to tell you that. And uh, yes, there may be prayers included, and it's good to use the prayers in these notes as well. But really, you have to have a deeper prayer life yourself uh, with the Lord, or again, you'll just not grow. You need spiritual food. And um, and you need sermons as well. Uh, you need somebody to expound the word to you. And uh, I'm not talking about my sermons, um, but uh, you do need uh, to feed on the word of God and have it explained to you by someone, uh, by preaching, by reading good Christian literature. Uh, you really have to augment your di uh, Bible reading notes. So keep on using them by all means, but I hope that just whets your appetite for something a wee bit deeper. And that's another sign that you're growing in your Christian faith. Okay. Now, uh, this is one, as I said, that Patricia's using. And just to show you how useful they are, um, I want to uh, go back to last Friday, Friday the 24th of July, because Patricia and I had a wee look at this together and we thought it was particularly useful. Um, it's about King David reaching breaking point. I think that's how we would describe it nowadays. Uh, King David had an awful lot on his plate. Uh, he had ups and downs and uh, sometimes he was closer to the Lord than others. Uh, but the Lord didn't desert him and uh, he was a man after God's own heart. But he had his difficulties and there's this... Um, uh, section here telling us that there was a time perhaps more than once when he was nearly at breaking point so again it's uh, a lesson for us it's an encouragement for us when we find the going a wee bit difficult when we feel as if we're reaching a breaking point uh, it's good to see how other folk coped and th there's a little phrase here which I hadn't heard before um, but it's a wonderful phrase and again I want to share it with you it says here that the sunshine, sorry, the same sunshine that melts the butter also hardens the clay. The same sunshine that melts the butter also hardens the clay. And that's uh, quite true, friends. Uh, you know, we can come across things in life and whatever the circumstances are, uh, the same set of circumstances can crush some people or it can strengthen other people. Exactly the same sunshine. It'll either melt the butter or harden the clay. So um, when you do find yourself in a sticky wicket, you're following the Lord and you get into difficulties. You can either turn against God because, well, you serve him and he doesn't seem to be doing much for you. You're in difficulties. And um, you don't have a clue exactly what's going on or why it's going on. Uh, so you can turn against God or you can turn to God for strength in times of trial. Strength and understanding. Now, 
I've often heard people say, you know, um, look at so-and-so. He's such a great Christian. Um, nothing seems to bother him. He takes everything in his stride. I wish I could be a Christian like that. Well, friends, it uh, reminds me, if you don't mind me digressing for a wee minute, it reminds me something. Uh, I'm sorry to drop down to this level, but it does remind me of some of these uh, talent shows that we see on television. You know, Britain's Got Talent or um, uh, what's the other one? The X Factor. OK, now there's people there, um, a lot of them, and they don't really have an awful lot of talent at all. Some of them do. Some of them are fantastic. But more often than not, uh, you tune in and there's somebody trying to sing or trying to dance or trying to do something. And they obviously aren't talented at all. Now, they want to be famous. Uh, they want to be a star and they want all that goes with being famous and rich and, and uh, celebrity and so forth. But it appears to me anyway, they don't seem to want to work at it. They don't seem to realise that if you want to achieve great success, it's not going to fall in your lap. Uh, you've got to put the hours in. You've got to rehearse. You've got to train. You've got to practice whatever it is that you want to get good at. And then with hard work and dedication, yeah world's your oyster one day you may follow your dream you may be a star you put the hours in you're getting the reward and you get to be an expert in whatever field it is you're interested in well friends christianity is an awful lot like that as well you can look at somebody and admire them as a christian and you may want to be like that person and that's a wonderful ambition it's 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 wonderful when somebody wants to, when, you, when you can mentor somebody or get somebody to um to follow in your footsteps in the faith and so to speak um but that person's got to realize that you got to put the r's in you know that person didn't get to be such a wise and capable christian without um, a lot of what goes on behind the scenes. Now, what do you have to put in to the Christian life uh, to grow to that level, as it were? Well, again, it's not rocket science, friends. It not land in your lap, but it's the same old, same old. you got to pray. You've got to have a meaningful prayer life. And you've got to read and you've got to study not least the Bible. So when you put the R's in, you'll find yourself growing. You'll find yourself getting more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people make progress more quickly than others, but that's what you've got to do. So it'll not happen automatically. Uh, there's spiritual disciplines to be followed. And when David got into his trouble, when he got to breaking point, how did he react? He didn't turn away on a huff because he had to do a lot of work. He didn't throw the towel in and give up. He says, Psalm 27 and verse 14, I'm sure a lot of you know it. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. It really is. As simple and as difficult as that. We have to wait upon the Lord in all sorts of wonderful ways. And it's difficult at times to wait upon the Lord. So much going on, so many distractions. But if you want to grow in the Christian faith, by all means, snack on his word. By all means, uh, use short prayers. But hopefully, hopefully, that's only the beginning of your journey. I wouldn't like anybody to tell me they've been a Christian for 60 or 70 years and they're not really reading their Bible, they're not really praying, but they are using these notes. Use these notes and something else and just let others see you grow in grace and in the faith. Okay, so um, take that as a recommendation for these. I'm not knocking them. As I said, many a person has started there and graduated to something else. But as I often say, we've got to grow, and keep on growing in the Christian faith. If we don't grow and keep growing, there's something wrong. We've got to ask ourselves why. You can do that by waiting upon the Lord 
be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. Good advice, <laughs> not from me, but from David. Take his advice. The only thing I'm going to advise you to do this evening is to keep praying, keep washing your hands, keep looking up, keep safe, and uh, I look forward to uh, you joining me for church again tomorrow. If you're from Larbert and you're getting ready for the service on the 26th of July, remember it's a communion service. So get some bread and something red to drink as well. Okay, thank you for listening and bye for now.